Hey there, welcome to the Quantum Leap podcast. Uh, We're really excited today to be bringing you an interview with Shane Callahan. Shane, welcome to the show. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Uh, Shane, uh, I'm sure you will remember, played Charles in O Ye of Little Faith, the recent Halloween episode. Uh, So we'll we'll talk a bit about that um, and some of the stories from behind the scenes there. Uh, but first, Shane, can you tell me a little bit about your your background, how you got into acting? I know you've, you've had a, quite a, an impressive career, which seems to have exploded well, in the last five or six years um, in particular. You, you seem to be suddenly everywhere. So could you walk us through that a little bit? Uh, yeah, well, I I, I, ne- I haven't really like uh, – I went to school for f- audio production. like in, okay. And this was back in the day, so I learned how to like record an analog. And uh, it was right before Pro Tools came out, and uh, um, and then, but they they the, the school I was going to offered some film classes, and I fell in love with editing, and uh, and you know we make some Super Eight films and some sixteen millimeter films, and this is right around like the Richard Linklater slacker days, and like uh, you know uh, 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 El Mariachi or uh, uh, Richard Rodriguez is that his name? I think yeah. right around that time yeah. with the, the seven minute uh, yeah. or the $7,000 budget film or with the book. Yeah. Had. And um, so, uh, but I was terrified of acting and I was terrified of actors because uh, like an actor didn't show up and I had to like, that was like my first time acting was I had to fill in for him on my own short film because he didn't show up and I was terrified of it. <laughs> but uh, uh, when I was, and then I moved to Wilmington, North Carolina at some point after like escaping like the, I was like, I was sort of drifting up and down the coast and I escaped from like, a, I didn't escape, but I over dramatize it um, from like some traveling salesman that I thought was like a fun thing to do to travel around. And it was horrible. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'd gotten out of that situation and went to Wilmington, North Carolina. And a friend of mine I became friends with there was in an acting class. And I just came and she invited me just to go audit the class. And I checked, check, went to check it out. There was an agent there named Shirley Dye. This is Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, she said, get some headshots and give me a call. And so I got some headshots and gave her, gave her a call and she started sending me out and things worked out. And a couple of friends of mine convinced me to audition for a play. And we're the only three actors that showed up. I'd found out after. So we all got the part. And I'm like, wow, got the first one. And then, but we're the only ones that showed up. So, but, uh, Don't ever think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, I, I really fell in love with, uh, fell in love with it through theater, I guess. And uh, even though the class was all about uh, all about like uh, film technique and stuff like that, but um, uh, yeah, and then um, started working in the southeast, like through uh, and Pittsburgh, because I grew mm-hmm. up in Western PA, and uh, you know, just working on Dawson's Creek or some movies. Donna Bella Jack in Pittsburgh, you know, she's a casting director there, and uh, love her. She's helped me out a lot, and. Uh, um, yeah, you were you were the the Tom Hanks lookalike in Dawson's Creek, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but I, I mean, I, I hate telling because like I, I still, you know, like a lot of actors get insecure at times, and like uh, that uh, that 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 job pissed me off. Uh, I auditioned for like the first season, like a lot, and and man, and I wasn't, I was still trying to figure things out. Like I was, I was, I don't think I was a natural. Like I was like a 50, 50 shot when I first started, like sometimes I'd be like, Oh, that was good. And then sometimes I'd be like, well, what the hell are you doing, man? And then, <laughs> you know, and uh, so for the first season, I'm sure I've had like a bunch of auditions for that, a bad audition for that show. So anyways, this, I think it was like the second, I forget what it was, but I didn't have to audition for the part. They just called me up, called my agent said, yeah, they offered you a role. And I was like, Holy shit, man, I'm, this is great. They just, they just offer only now, you know? And <laughs> So they didn't, I couldn't pick up the script and then I was, you know, they wouldn't give it to me. I was like, well, that's weird. I think they'd want me to have the script and I didn't get it till I get on the set. And then, uh, I read the script and, and, and I was, uh, an actor auditioning for Dawson Creek's, he had for Dawson's, uh, Mm -hmm. movie. He was a movie filmmaker and, uh, I was supposed to be a bad actor auditioning for his, uh, for his movie. And I was like, son of a bitch. (laughs) Like, they approached horrible. you for that. <laughs> this is this is terrible, and uh, uh, and like so, like I remember I rebelled against it. Like I was I was I was purposefully absolutely horrible. Like uh, I was like walking out of frame and like talking just off and like screwing up the lines because I was. And then it was like, well, he doesn't have to be that bad. And I was like, and I was like, well, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so it was a uh, kind of like a. It was a. Uh, I thought I was hot shit, and then it was like all of a sudden, like, oh damn! I guess I need to. I guess I got to get get back to some acting classes, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> Tammy Arnold, and then ever since her, uh, I started to feel like I understood it more. But great. So it's not and- a- in, in parallel to that, any any more work in editing or doing anything kind of behind the camera, or is it, it at that point post the Dawson's Creek incident? Is it just been purely acting? No, no, I've uh, done. Uh, uh, I edited a season of a CBS show. It was on Saturday morning called The Inspectors uh, for okay. a season of that, and um, that was really fun. I mean, I probably was not qualified to do it, so I was lucky to be <laughs> doing it. <laughs> Love the honesty. Uh, um, I mean, no, I'm, I mean, I'm a. Uh, uh, I got good instinct. I, I have good instincts as an editor, but uh, um, uh, thank God they had an assistant uh, editor uh, to help me because uh, with all the different, you know, uh, codex and things like that at the time, I'm a little bit better mm. at it now. But you know, but it was really fun watching actors. You know, I think I was obsessed with like uh, matching, you know, with continuity, and then you get into it editing, and it's just like ah it's not that important. <laughs> it's like, it really isn't like, you don't have to always like if, I mean, it helps, but you know, if like you itch your eyebrow in a scene, you don't have to always do that. Like if it's still the best take after that and they're not going to have you itching it like in a wide shot, it's okay. You know? Yeah. So. I like. Yeah. There's, a, there's always like that, that tiny 1% of the audience, which is me watching out for that kind of thing. But so you're 99% like, of the, I, I'm that guy, but most people won't. So I, 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 well, ultimately, it's about I apologize. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like, uh, you know, Martin Scorsese, he, he, a lot of his movies, like, are, you know, there's some stuff in there where it's just like, you know, some shots are very, very different. And even like wobbly crane shots, but it's just, it's just whatever's going on. I think he's, I don't know, I'm talking out of my ass right now, but maybe I think he's all about performance. It seems like it, you know, it doesn't worry about. Ultimately, that's what it's all about. So, yeah. Yeah. So um okay so you've you've been doing a bit of bit of both of those um and then you, you were in the theater have you been doing much much work in the theater recently or just TV The last play I did was uh with a good friend of mine um was True West in uh, Wilmington North Carolina okay. And uh in LA I did some musical theater back in like the 2000s at some point in time and uh I'm not I'm not like a musical theater. Uh, I don't know it that well. Like musical theater people like are very, very well educated. I'm not really talking myself up too well. <laughs> but a, a buddy of mine was the pirate King and pirates of Penzance when I was out here. And, uh, um, and it was with like, it was with like, uh, like real operette opera singers. Like it was an opera, like they did an operetta style. And I was like, uh, and they, so he's, he says, and he was the pirate King and he's like, oh, Come on, man! You got to come in and audition for this. It's like I need, I need pirate. We need pirates. My, my pirates are terrible. My pirates are. I need pirate energy. So I came in and I think I was just brought in to be an absolute Looney Tunes pirate on stage to help bring pirate energy. Because like I sang the, I think I think I forget if I sang Happy Birthday or the ABCs, and I was even at a key. But uh, <laughs> I worked real hard on it, and I got in key finally for the for the to the. Uh, but I didn't even you know by the time we had to perform, but. Uh, I didn't know what, like, if I was baritone or something. They asked me, are you a uh, soprano or baritone? And I asked a friend of mine who was next, I said, what are you? And he said, baritone. I said, I'm baritone. <laughs> so, and I followed him around stage because I could yeah. sing. If I sung in key with him, then I'd be all right. <laughs> so That but, makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. That's, but I loved it. I had a blast. You know, it was, it was fantastic being a freaking pirate and with, like, opera singers singing beautifully and, like, I'd – fall in love with everybody because they're just like glorious singers so so you but. you really have done a quite a wide variety of stuff is quantum leap your first horror my first horror uh well no i did mothman prophecies with uh mark pellington back in uh 2001 uh and uh so that would have been i think that would have been my first horror film that i was a part of uh and um uh, my storyline got got nudged on the floor on that one, but uh, it was really fun to do. Damn editors! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but but uh, it's all good. Um, Mark's a really cool guy, awesome director. It's really fun to uh, work with him because he's you know he's, 
he, he's just an artist. He really is. He's a, he's a true artist. So how how did you get involved in Quantum Leap? What 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 took you to the audition there? Well, you know, it, it, it's the same way. I, cause I watched I've watched some of uh, your podcasts. It's same. It's self taping nowadays. Everything's self taping. Okay, right. And uh, so and it happened fast, pretty pretty quickly. Um, you know, get an email like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. And then you watch it and then you go and like, for instance, at this time, typically when you get an audition, you know, you try to, if you haven't seen the show, I saw, I've watched, I remember watching the old series, uh, the original one back in, uh, cause like I was like right in high school when it was on, you know, and, uh, killer show, you know? So it was exciting. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. I didn't even know they were bringing it back. And I was like, oh my God, go on weep. I mean, I was, I got all jazzed up, you know, cause like, uh, you know, there's some things that are nostalgic in a way that like, uh, I don't know, anything nostalgic you can get really excited about, you know? And it's like, this is like, for us, like, I, this is the first time I like called when I found out I got cast and I was like, I called like, I was like calling up my friends, like, ah, they're redoing Quantum Leap. I'm going to do, I'm doing to be a guest star in it. And I'm like, what? You know? And it was exciting, you know? I mean, it's every time getting a job is exciting, but like this was, this one had a little extra behind it. Cause it was, uh, uh, cause it was Quantum Leap. And, um, but so you get the email and you're like, oh, cool. And then you go, well, I wonder are these the same people? Is the same kind of concept? And then only thing you could see at that time, the audition was the trailer. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. So this is, they got definitely more technology now. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they so, got a bunch uh, of- yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and, uh, you know, and knocked out the audition and heard back. I think it was maybe a few days later after sending it out. So. It's all a strange experience with self taping. I prefer it in person. Yeah, but, I can imagine. Yeah, and then and was that like a few days before? Like you say, it's, it seemed to be quite a similar story between a lot of the performers at the moment. It's the, the audition, the news, and then straight onto set within a few days. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty quickly. It was pretty quick, and uh, so and you know, and TV's fast as it is anyway. So, uh, um, but uh, this was really. It was really, uh, it seems like everybody has similar experience on, even in the different episodes, like the, whatever vibe they got going on, on, uh, the set is, uh, carries over from episode to episode. It seems like, because it's really a fun, casual, like good work environment. And, uh, um, you never know if you're going to, it's going to be, you know, tense or something. And there's absolutely zero, uh, tenseness. (laughs) <laughs> in this one <laughs> so it was cool the cast was fun we all just hung out you know when there's lightning shots and things like that and you know cracking jokes and learning about each other helping each other with auditions that we come that we got to tape while shooting <laughs> so it's, it was oh wow fun. nice yeah yeah well you know you gotta you know you, you're you gotta you know, you're filming and you have to do another audition you have to have it done by tomorrow so you know if some you got actors there so you know, you can read lines with people, and, uh, and yeah, like you say, be... self taping is obviously the way at the moment. But I think I I just got it in my head that people self taping were off in a room somewhere, maybe with a partner or something, that a non acting partner. Uh, but actually, yeah, being able to call on actors to bounce off against must must help. Yeah, it helps a little bit. But when you're reading for somebody, you 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 more want to support them, and and uh, you don't want to like start like you know, really getting into like the, the yeah. other character too much. Hey, I want this role. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like, you know, cause you, but it, it's just, it's uh, uh, you just want to keep the timing for the other yeah. person when you're the reader. Mostly. Yeah. If you're actually taping it, you don't want to like go crazy on the back of the camera. Cause then people become interested in the person and the yeah. reader. <laughs> so You mentioned that you listened to, uh, you'd watched some of the interviews already. Had you seen Elise's interview? Yeah, I did. You, yeah, you cool. may be expecting the question that I'm about to ask you then. Um, so Elise mentioned that uh, you you all at one point told ghost stories to each other. Uh, yeah, well, hers, I, I she had told us hers that, that she told in the podcast, which is genuinely creepy. And uh, yeah, <laughs> did you did you share a ghost story that you remember? No, I don't really have any. I mean, I have I. We that was we were sharing that right before we were doing a we were in between takes on set. So oh, okay. if we were sharing them while we we're just hanging out outside in the uh, in the tent, uh, 
maybe sort of, but sometimes I have a hard time remembering things. So I probably was like, if it came to like, oh, that's why I got to, I probably would have been like, I don't know, Jesus, I got to go through the filing in my brain, you know? <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, the closest I had was to one is, uh, um, but it wasn't really, a, well, I don't know. It was when it, out in Los Angeles, I was messing around with runes, you know, like the Celtic runes and things like that. And, uh, um, but I was, I, w- I couldn't make a decision on anything. And I was, this is right after I did that play and the same uh, theater was asking me to do uh, some other plays. And I was terrified to do them because I didn't think, uh, um, uh, I didn't think I could handle it. And, uh, cause they, it was bigger roles with more singing and like soloing. And I was terrified to sing alone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, so I was like, should I do this? Should I do this? And I'm like doing I Ching. I don't know if that's how you say it. So my apologies if that's not how you say it and like runes and I was doing it and I was doing them wrong, like trying to get an answer because in my mind, I just couldn't make up my decision in my own head. And I felt, I felt like I opened up like a bad thing because of that, because I was so anxiety ridden and, uh, I got sick for a month and kept going to the doctor and no one knows why I just had a temperature. This was like 2000 and three or four or something. Mm-hmm. And my roommate at the time, we each had the same dream. Uh, the next night he goes, man, I had this bizarre dream about you. It was scary as hell. And I had the same one where I had saw myself. There was three versions of me. Uh, I was sleeping in my bed and there was one of me it was four, I guess. One of me was sitting next to the bed, just like cold eyed looking ahead. And then, and then, both of us saw this same dream and then you walked through the hallway and then there was another one of me in the living room that noticed the observer, which would have been me and my roommate mm-hmm. in his dream. And then it's like, Oh shit. You know, cause it didn't seem like good me's. <laughs> and then we looked back in the kitchen and there was another one that another version of me that just like crossed the frame, you know, like, you know, like sort of like that. And mm-hmm. then, and then, uh, and then, um, and then look back to the one in the living room and the same, same version of me said, uh, said they can see us. And then I woke up and that's when he woke up and he told me that dream when I had the same dream. And, uh, and that, and that, and then, uh, I was, uh, I was baptized Catholic. Um, mm-hmm. And, but I'm not really like a huge church goer, you know, like I never really, but like, I think I was like, I got a cross here somewhere, man. <laughs> like I, I was looking for a cross. Yeah, man. And I'm like, I got, I know I got a cross somewhere and I found a, this cross I had and I'm like, I put a nail on the wall and I put that baby right up there, man. <laughs> Cause I was like, we, we need everything we got right now. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and then I, I put the Celtic runes away cause I'm like, I am not qualified for this. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> played too many du- too much Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid, so like I felt like I was probably like, of course I know what to do with these Celtic runes. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've managed wizards through wars. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that's a ghost story, but it's a it's a creepy uh, story. It's a spooky story. It's I I feel like I'm revisiting Halloween right now. So thank you. There you go. Good. <laughs> That's good. Um, just uh, going into the episode itself a bit. Um, one of the things I'm always interested in is yeah, how the uh, how you kind of keep the the atmosphere light during a, a scary story. And you've spoken a little bit about that already. I also noticed Charles in particular. It's quite a quite a heavy role to play. There's a lot of anger there, a lot of passion. It's maybe for Charles. It's the the performance is more about the yeah, that kind of heat and fire rather than about the the horror elements. Can you talk a little bit about, A, how you prepare for something like that, but B, also how you keep that light and and keep that levity going with the rest of the cast? I assume you didn't have uh, falling outs with the likes of the uh, Josh and the others. Um, You're right on point. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, no falling outs at all. Actually, Josh and I got along very well. I love talk and hang out he's because we're we're both uh we're both pittsburgh steeler fans so okay. you know we got to like talk about football and things like that and uh and then that's not all we talked about but it was like you know when you're you don't have a choice when you grow up and you know for me at least grew up in western pa it's just it's going to be drilled into you and um, 
but uh so we actually joked actually a lot of times before the scenes we were actually riff raffing a lot and uh and then all of a sudden it's just like okay we're getting ready and then uh and then it's like all right you son of a bitch you know <laughs> so get right, you snap right into it you know because like he, my brother's totally just uh my, him the character speaking as a character now you know like he 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 it's his fault like we lost everything at least in my mind i mean even though but yes it is his fault no not even in my mind it really is and uh so like yes uh my character completely stuck in the horror of just reality and uh just the stock market crashing and and our what has happened to our and even more importantly what is happening to our child you know mm. and uh and i would think probably at this point, you know, the marriage probably wasn't doing that good. Obviously, it wasn't because my freaking brother is, uh, you know, planning a getaway with my wife. So, <laughs> and killing our daughter at the same time. And, and my wife apparently doesn't even, uh, is always like, maybe not okay. Maybe she didn't think it was going to go that far. But, uh, but uh, from my perspective, it seemed that way. And, uh, um, but to keep it light, it wasn't that – it really wasn't – it's uh, – uh, there's some – I mean, you know, there's some. It all depends on what the, uh, you know, uh, the director wants to. But uh, it wasn't really – everybody was so professional and all the other mm -hmm. actors were so uh, ready to go. It, it was very easy to uh, go in and out of it. It really was. And you have a lot of time in between takes and setups, so – most of the time, you know, it's uh, you just it's good to relax because then when you get get going again, you know, like whether, you know, if you get angry, you know, like breathing can get strange, you know, things like that. Uh, um, early on in my career, when I've done Shakespeare, I've actually had breathing problems when I got angry, and then by the time I had this give like a monologue in Shakespearean, I couldn't feel my face, you know, <laughs> so like I'm like blah, 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 blah. and. Uh, <laughs> so which is which some people think is a choice and it's like no i'm just desperately trying to feel my face um <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like say so it's very interesting take very interesting way to go about it yeah oh, thank you thank you thank you uh but uh you know for this it was very easy it's just such a cool cast and we got together very very quickly you know like just got along so it, it actually was very very good flowing and uh, lots of good flow and it wasn't uh, um, hard to get. I think anger for a lot of male actors, we can access it pretty quickly. Uh, mm. um, maybe probably for any actor. Anger seems to be a pretty, you know, accessible emotion, especially nowadays, you know. Uh, but uh, it was uh, it was fun. It was it really was. I, I was bummed out when it when it was when it was uh, all over. On the, the topic of the arc, were you aware of, of how that episode was fitting into the the bigger picture? Um, because there's this whole ghost story going on throughout, which is actually um, a, a person from the future trying to communicate with Ray. Were you, were you let in on any of that? Have you been following that along? No, I was not aware of that. And... Uh, uh... Uh, at that time, I think the when we were filming that, they had just like while we were filming is when the first episode aired. Uh, and I think about that happened about I think I think we you know it was about like eight eight to ten days I think we filmed and maybe like on day five or six I think it was that the first episode aired and uh, so you know we didn't or at least I didn't. Um, I don't think, I don't know if anybody else did, but I didn't know what was, uh, you know, what through line and, and, and I didn't need to know either. Cause I just needed to make sure, uh, I figured out how to save my daughter and, and then deal with what new discoveries happened between my brother and my wife. That's what I was focused on. It was fun watching, uh, Ben and Addison work together on, you know, cause I didn't know exactly how I was going to do, but like that. The timing that they have and the different alternate takes they give uh, is so fun to watch. Like you know, like the uh, the um, the scene where like um, where like he finds out that we're gonna you know he needs to have a bathroom and then um, 
uh, Addison says, uh, oh, no, it's a water closet. And he's like, oh, water closet. And, you know, just the different, like, rhythms that they do yeah. between each other is they're, – they're so tight. And you can – I mean, you know, and I know this is their first – but it seems like they're on, like, season eight with, like, their timing, you know, already with someone. Because, yes. like, it's just fun to watch because uh, – um, it was just funny. And of course we can't laugh. It's like only in, inside your brain, you know, as an actor, you just be like, oh, that's, that's good shit. But you know, about the same time, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, like if your character's bad, not like, um, uh, not, I guess that scene was really bad, but, um, it was just fun to watch. Cause they, they just had such funny timing. This, um, this did seem to be one of the first episodes that really lent into some of Ray's comic ability. I don't know if that was just to offset the uh, the horror elements, but there was definitely a lot of comedy coming out from from Ben that episode. Yeah, that we hadn't yeah, seen like, so I wondered much if like the season. No, and does does he say uh, in this one? He what does he say? He says, "Oh, uh, oh, hell no!" When the uh, is that what he says? Yeah, did. did and does he say "Oh hell no" and like other other ones too? Uh, no. As he said it more, I always wondered if that was because because didn't like uh, Scott um, Bakula's character didn't he say it wasn't "Oh boy" like oh a boy. big thing? Yeah, yeah. I always wondered yeah, if like no, oh. No, in in some of the early trailers, and I think it, in production they were talking about giving him "Oh shit" as a oh, shit. as a catchphrase. <laughs> Seems to have been parked at some point. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh hell no, could work. Oh, hell no, works really well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, uh, I think people can relate to that. Yeah. Um, before we start moving to wrap up, um, are there any other stories from the set that that you can think of or any, any other experiences that you can share that I haven't uh, pulled out from you so far? You know, I, I was trying to, it's, it was so like usually the stories is like when something went wrong or something and there really wasn't any. Everything was real smooth. Like it was uh you know, there was some fun things like I had remembered like I had worked with the director Chris before and uh we realized okay. that on uh Vampire Diaries in a really fun scene like uh 10 years before this. And so it was just like wait a second. Yeah, wait a second. It's just like and then I got I never knew the story behind uh uh, the scene we did that that episode the, the at the time the people uh, the producers of Vampire Diaries were really like happy with with that episode and that that like he got some uh, uh, he he got a lot more work from that and I was like well that's cool it's good to be a part of you know <laughs> uh, um, you know just some there was just uh, I don't really have any like nothing crazy that happened because it was just fun it was just fun to do the craziest thing was like when people. Uh, well, no, no, it wasn't crazy. But like, I remember sometimes I'll have these moments when I'm filming and I'll like catch myself and I'm like, what the hell are you doing, man? How did you get yourself? How, how the hell are you here right now? And uh, cause like I grew up in a very small, I mean, a lot of people did a lot of people, very small, you know, I, I didn't think about being, and maybe the quantum leap level of it did it to me. Cause like, I re remember quantum leap from, you know, watching it as a teenager. And uh, so it like, you know, magnified you know it'd be like being on like you know lord of the rings or something like that you know i think mm -hmm. it's a thing and uh uh i just remember it was one day we had well it was you know the scene where um uh um uh we we spot uh uh aunt tessa when she's dead on top of the yeah uh that was you know that was a very quick scene to shoot you know like we come in you know, at least our part, you know, we come in and it's just like, it's just like, Wah! and then, and then we're out, you know, and then it's, it's cut to commercial or whatever. And, uh, um, that's all we did that. At least I did that one day and Josh too. And I remember thinking, and the Steelers were playing that night. And so we were both like in our trailer next to each other <laughs> and like, we're watching the game and we got the, and it took a while for us to get going. So I'm just like, I'm watching the game and I'm like, Man, what the hell am I doing? Like I'm sitting in this fancy ass trailer watching the Steelers game on a big screen on the universal lot, which is like, you know, holy shit. And, and, uh, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. you know, and then like the game's over, we lose that sucked, but then we get on set and then I start thinking, oh, this is bad. I shouldn't watch Steeler games before filming because like that really, that's like, maybe gives me the bad vibes, but, 
and then we get on set. You're we finding go in. a dead body. I mean, you you, you need yeah, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, you need something to bring you down. <laughs> yeah. And then like get on set and then like we go and then like for about 20 minutes we go in and we like go in and like dead body and then we're out and then like cool you're done for the day and I'm like what the what the hell I mean it's just it's it just it seems so bizarre and like uh like <laughs> something I shouldn't be living but I am and like I'm grateful for it but I guess maybe I feel like I I have sometimes feel like I I don't you know like it's just really cool you know it's it's like and, and it's just but it's really strange and it's like I uh just a strange experience it'd be like uh it feels like a fantasy land you know and then you're gone and then the like, next thing you know i'm like sitting out in the standing on the side of the road uh um my mother-in-law was in town while we were shooting so uh i you know we we got one car so i was waiting for you know my wife to come pick me up so like the next thing you know like i'm watching a game and then, and then i see a dead body and then 15 minutes later i'm just standing on the side of the road and i'm like what the hell was that? You know, and I don't know if that's strange for you, but it just seems so bizarre. <laughs> that's can't even relate. Living the dream, though, amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it it does. It feels like that, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But I think the quantum leap level added to that. Yeah, it's got to. So, but. Shane, you've been super generous with your time, and it's been so good talking to you. But before I let you go, can you share with me uh, any upcoming projects you've got that uh, the viewers can can find you on? Yeah, uh, so a movie um, we just filmed it, filmed it, uh, filmed it after Quantum Leap, uh, uh, called Billy Knight, and mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a uh, it's an indie film, uh, really cool, uh, um, you know sort of uh discovery movie and um it's uh i thought it was just uh they said they said it my agent told me it was just you know it's an independent film but it's going to be a fun cast and uh and i was like oh, okay cool and whenever I hear independent film coming from the south you know i mean I, you know sometimes independent film means like you got fifty thousand dollars you know or something like that you know so like it's uh you you, you don't necessarily think you know and then i look in the, and i look and i find out and then I'm talking to the director, Alec Roth. This is his first movie, and and uh, he uh, was talking to him like on a you know like on Facetime, and um, and he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, and and then like Al Pacino, you know, feel free to like uh you know play with the lines and stuff like that if you want to and stuff like you know it's all good, you know, and and like, Al Pacino has been giving me all kinds of ideas rehearsals, and I was like, did that son of a gun just say Al Pacino? And uh, I was trying to play it off, you know, like it was just uh uh you know, not a big deal, <laughs> but inside I'm like, is Al Pacino in this damn movie? And then I uh, found out, yeah, he's playing Billy Knight, which is, you know, what the movie is called. And uh, I was like, holy shit, independent film in Los Angeles is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. So that's Billy Knight. And is that expected out next year? I bet next year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's, I played a character called Professor Kemper. I'm a, I'm a film teacher. And, um, uh, so it's, uh, there's, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Charlie Heaton's, uh, character's, uh, teacher. And then also, uh, um, a character named Emily, which is Diana Silvers. And, uh, it's real, I think it's going to be a really fun movie. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it's got Al Pacino. So, I mean. Al Pacino and Shane Callahan, two great reasons to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> thank thank you that's very generous <laughs> well that's been really great talking to you um thank you so much for your time thank you too matt i mean it's had a great time man i appreciate it <laughs>